Hey folks, Ray from DCRamerica.com. Today I've got something a little bit different. Uh, this is a bit of a how-to video to use the DCR analyzer for comparing files, like for sensor data, heart rate data, GPS tracks, all that kind of stuff. Um, the video, or the purpose of the video is sort of twofold. One, in case you didn't know about the DCR analyzer, now you do, but more importantly for me, I'm treating this like a little bit of a manual slash how-to guide for the analyzer itself. Um, so I do have like an online page that shows how it all works and some tips and stuff like that. Uh, but I've gotten questions over the last months, I guess you could say, that I wanted to kind of hit on some subjects and some like pro tips, if you will, for how I use the analyzer to use it. Uh, now, if you're not at all interested in like analyzing files and comparing files, then go ahead and just skip this video. Um, there'll be more cool stuff on the channel soon, uh, but just sort of give you that like heads up. This is probably gonna be pretty boring and probably pretty geeky, uh, but if you are into that, let's go forth. Um, so anyways, the purpose of the DCR analyzer is to compare files uh, between devices used on the same activity. Um, so it is definitely not a training log. Please, please, please do not use it as a training log. It is a horrible training log. I'm telling you that right now. Um, it is purely for going out for a run with four watches or whatever it may be, or three head units or 12 head units, and then downloading all those files and comparing them. Um, that's the goal. So to be out of, I use it for myself, so for myself, I use it for comparing files in all my reviews. So you see me overlaying three power meters at once, four power meters at once, uh, four heart rate sensors at once, GPS tracks from four, five, six, seven, eight devices at once. Uh, that's the purpose of it. It's not at all, again, as a training log. Um, it's not something I would, uh, please, again, do not use it as a training log. Um, so I'm gonna walk you through how I do a set comparison from start to finish. Um, the first thing to do, it sounds pretty obvious, but to download all of your files. Um, so as a general tip, I would download the files as soon as you're done with your run your workout whatever it is the same day um, I I'm really bad at doing that and I'll do it like weeks later and just such a pain in the butt to consolidate all the files and get them all in the right stuff and to make sure you remember what is what um, just do it the same day your life you'll thank yourself later on um, I then put them into a folder a bunch of folders and the way I do it here is I put them in basically Dropbox and I've got all these sets in Dropbox um, based on the date uh, and then the purpose of the activity so you can see like April 8th Paris ride April 20 Nice 40 mile ride. In my head, these make sense. Um, I'm not really trying to like justify this for everyone. This is just how I, I do it to keep things logical. Uh, and then in those folders, you'll see the individual files. So right here, you can see this is the April 17th Kansas run. Um, and what I do is I rename part of the file. So I keep the original file name and then I append to the front of it um, a little bit of information. I append to it Fitbit Versa run, obvious, 40935. Ticker X. Um, so that's telling me it's a Ticker X heart rate strap. And if you click it there, you can see the rest of it. Um, in this case, Sunto 3 uh, Fitness Optical. So that's telling me that I'm using this watch here with the optical sensor on the back of it. If I was using a power meter, um, like in the other case right here with this one, uh, you'll see it says, you know, Edge 520 Power Tap G3, uh, Edge 520 Plus. Garmin Vector 3. And if I was using heart rate sensors with this data and I want to care about that, I would also add like ticker X, et cetera. In the case of this particular set, I don't really care about the heart rate data from it, so I'm not worried about adding that detail in. Uh, that detail is still there and we'll talk about that later on in a minute. So once I have all these sets, then I go head up to the DCR analyzer. Um, and I'm gonna find it right there with the right page. There we go. Um, so this is the analyzer itself. Again, you can use this as well, by the way. This is something that you can definitely use. I'll link it in the description there and I'll explain how it all works at the end of the video um, in terms of like how you can access it. Um, but essentially this is the analyzer once you've created an account and logged in. And you can see all my sets here. The way it works is that you have sets in the analyzer. So a set is simply a pile of data from the exact same activity. It does have to be the same activity. You can't compare Tuesday's runs with Thursday's run. I mean, technically you can, uh, but it, that's not the purpose here. It's to compare the exact same activity across multiple devices. Um, so you can see all my sets are listed there by the created date, so the date I uploaded them. Um, so not necessarily the date of the activity. So you can see here, I uploaded a bunch yesterday. Um, as I said, I'm really bad at like, doing these the same day. I tend to do them a bunch as usually when I get close to doing a review, I upload them all and then deal with them right down there. Uh, so I go here and I go new set um, and I just drag and drop the files into it. So it's super easy. Uh, so we're gonna start off with this power meter set here. So I drag all the files in there and then I just click create and that's it. Now in terms of file types accepts, it's uh, .fit files, .tcx files, .gpx files. Those are the three main fitness files types out there. Um, if you have something else on earth that's not those three file types, 
honestly, it's probably not a device you wanna use. So once I've got the data in here, uh, you can see now on the screen there, I've got uh, the first field is power because this happens to be a cycling activity. We'll go through the running one in just a moment. Um, so you see power as I scroll on down. I've got some of the averages there. We'll talk about that in a second as well. Uh, left, right power balance, which is kind of cool. A cadence data, heart rate data elevation data, then this is coming into from the uh, the units themselves, all those data is pulled from that. Mean max power data, so this is overlaying over a time continuum, um, basically the power max power label for that um, amount of time. So in this case, you could see 10 minutes, uh, all the way up to a couple seconds and out to an hour for the duration of this ride. And down at the bottom, GPS data, so you can see the track, I can zoom in and out on this, uh, pretty straightforward. And then below that, sensor data. This is where the really cool stuff gets into. Um, and again, I'm gonna go through each of these sections in more detail. Uh, stats, files, and then download file set and name of the file set. Um, so this allows anyone with a link. So these are all private links by default. Everything's private within your account unless you set it up as public. Um, this allows you to go ahead and share those. So like on my reviews, I share the public links and then people can download the entire set so that you can go ahead and analyze it yourself if you don't wanna trust my analysis, I guess. Um, so right here at the bottom, set name. This is where you can give it a pretty name. So the way I tend to do it is I do May 9th. This is the actual day of the uh, file itself. And then I say the purpose of this. So this was a uh, lunch river loop. Um, I know in my head what that is, uh, liver ride, sorry, lunch river ride loop. Um, and then what I typically do is the name of the devices after it. Uh, so in this case, I was primarily testing uh, a power meter. So I'm gonna do AVO power meter times or a vector three, and then power tap G3. If I was focused on the data from like head units, I would probably put the head units in there. But again, this is just how I, I tend to structure that in my head. Um, from a smoothing standpoint, this smooths the power data. Um, for rides that are under half an hour, I usually keep to something like three to five seconds of smoothing, um, just to allow you to see it. You can change this on the fly. This is just purely for like a, a way to smooth the data, make it easier. For rides over like an hour or so, then I tend to go to like 10 seconds because the data is just too hard to read with all the, the little up and downs. So uh, in this case, it's a little over an hour and a half. I'm just gonna do 10 seconds for right now. And I'm gonna set it as public, which means that I get a public link at the bottom there that people can access if you give them the link. Um, it's still like having an unlisted um, video on YouTube or something like that where there, I don't publish a directory of links by any means. So you have to share your own link to someone else in order for you to, or for them to be able to find it. So let's go back to the very top and start up here. This is the power data from this ride. Um, now I can zoom into something, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in this little section right here. So I just highlight and zoom. Now what you may see right off the top of that is the, the files aren't perfectly aligned, like offset a few seconds. Uh, and now the way it works with the analyzer is super, super cool because we use the GPS timestamps from your device. So when you go outside and you turn on GPS, it gets a timestamp from it, uh, and then it goes ahead and aligns based on that. So that in theory, every device is always perfectly aligned, even if you don't press start at the same time. So if I press start on this one and then press start on this one five seconds later and then like five minutes later, press start on this one, they'll all be perfectly aligned uh, from a time standpoint. However, sometimes it doesn't really work out as well as you think it does. Um, and you usually get like this one or two second offset um, because the time of the device is still isn't perfect, especially in indoor trainer season. Uh, typically like a Garmin like this will drift about one to three seconds a week um, indoors when it does not have GPS access. Uh, so a lot of times in the middle of trainer season, each week I'll go ahead and I'll take these outside, turn them on, get GPS, come back inside, so my sets align perfectly. Nonetheless, you can fix it if they don't. Um, so what I'm gonna do here, if you look, if I hover over these in the right-hand top corner there, um, you'll see there's a timestamp. It says, you know, 2018, uh, May 9th, 12.58.51. Uh, and what I can do is I can say, oh, this purple line right there, the AVO, is a couple seconds ahead. So if I go backwards and figure out where these two peaks are, so this is at uh, 55 seconds after, and I just go back and go boom, this is at 51 seconds. So that means that this unit right here probably needs to go back four seconds. Uh, now, as a nitpickers thing, technically I wouldn't want to do this on the power data itself because this could imply that there is a, um, a delay with that power meter and I want to make sure I, I understand that. So I usually use a third party source, for example, the heart rate data, all connect to the heart rate sensor strap and then do the changes on that. But for the purpose of this example, let's not worry about that. All I need to know is I want to bring back the uh, AVO, that purple line there, the 1030 data, four seconds. So I just go down to the bottom here and I go into sets. So right here, here's my sets. So here's my edge 1030 set. I click edit, and then I go back by four seconds, so negative four, and it slides it back. Same thing happens if you have a unit that's on the wrong time zone. 
Sunto stuff all the time uh, because they don't change time zones correctly. You could be off like by an hour or two hours or nine hours, however long you flew. Um, all you do is just figure out the number of seconds that you're off and then I would adjust from there. So like if you're off by an hour, then it's 3,600 seconds. So you can do the math and calculator pretty straightforward. Also on this tab here, you can see how it can turn on and off certain graphs for this particular file set. This is useful if you have data from a given unit that's just horrendous and it's really making your, your overall graphs look kind of messy. Uh, you can turn it off and then focus on what you care about. You can also change colors here as well in case the colors are, are too close to each other. So I click save there and go back up the top. And now if I zoom back in here on these little sections, you'll see they're much more closely aligned in some ways, but I may have actually overshot. And that gets into some of the complexities of trying to use power to realign things. Uh, so here I definitely overshot by about two seconds. So I'm gonna go back and change this now to negative uh, two seconds instead. And that should be what it is. And that basically shows me that in actuality, that unit was just slightly behind by a couple seconds on the one bump that I did. And now if I look at these more closely, they're almost perfectly aligned on top of each other, um, at least from a like timing standpoint. So as you can see here, um, what you're noticing right now is that as I shift around, the averages at the bottom here are changing for the entire time period. So right now, the average for this entire time period, 184 uh, watts for Vector3, 183 for the Avio, and 185 for the PowerTap G3. If I zoom in right here, you can see now it just shows me the averages for that given section. As I hover over it in the upper right hand corner, uh, it goes ahead and shows me those exact data points at the exact moment in time. Um, and this way I could look at this and say, okay, so right here, uh, you know, vector three may be a little higher than each other. Um, if I go down to uh, right there, so I'm look at this spike right, spike right here, you can see I would say the Avio power meter on this particular um, ride seem to be undercutting uh, some of the sprints. Um, side note, in case you're wondering, they've already sent me a new unit uh, to address that issue. So not really worried about it, it's a prototype unit. Um, but in any case, you can see sort of how some of that data works. Left, right power. Super, super cool stuff here. So what this is really interesting, so in this case, the Avio power meter is actually a left-only unit, um, which means that in theory, I'd be curious to look at how the left-only side overlays with Garmin's left-only side. So what I can do is do this. Um, if you look at this carefully, in the right-hand corner of this graph, it says left and right for the Avio unit. Um, and now you'll notice for right, it shows zero. And then you can see Garmin left shows 84 watts, uh, left for the 10, 1030 shows 177 watts, and then I have a virtual right. Um, so the virtual right is when there is no left right split, uh, it doesn't have any data, uh, we just assume that it's even. Um, most of the time you wanna get rid of it though. So you go down to the bottom here, find that power tap file again right there, and then go ahead and click this little box and turn off so show virtual left power, meaning I don't care about splitting that power, that total power into half. I just wanna ignore that on the left right power graph. Go back up the top here, and now I can see that I can just have the left right power uh, for those given sources. Okay, next we have cadence. Uh, whether this is running cadence or cycling cadence, they both show up here, uh, almost identical sort of thing as power. I can hover above things and see where things went wrong. As a general tip, when you're looking at power meter issues, um, look at cadence as a, a driver for that. So in cases where the power is off, go down and look at your cadence for that same spot and see if the cadence is off. In most cases, uh, cadence errors drives power data errors. Just as a heads up on that. Um, so scrolling out a bit more, heart rate data. In this case, all of them were connected to the same heart rate sensor strap. Uh, now you'll notice in the upper right hand corner, it shows the name of the heart rate sensor, the Wahoo Ticker X. Uh, and the way that is, the reason that is, is because I have sensor IDs automatically enumerated from the files. So if you're using a Garmin device or a Wahoo device or any devices that records a .fit file natively, they will record the AMP plus IDs in those FIT files. Um, that is super, super duper cool because that means I don't have to actually remember which sensors went to which files. Um, so there's no like mislabeling accident down the road. In this case, what you see happens here is that this is the sensor ID 3141, which is the Wahoo Ticker X. Manufacturer name is automatically pulled up from the manufacturer database, uh, manufacturer Wahoo Fitness model. This is something that I've added in the, the comparator tool, the analyzer tool, that you can go ahead and select a model. Um, so you can see right up here at the top, uh, I've got a AMP plus ID of 11, bike power there. Uh, they don't quite have the, uh, the right AMP plus ID in there yet. Manufacturer model. I just would click on edit, and I would choose a manufacturer model. 
Now, because I'm me, Ray, I have admin privileges to add new models, um, I don't grant that to everyone because I don't want models to be weirdly named in here. Like I don't want people to have like 10 variants of the same thing. So if you're missing a model name, go ahead and just shoot me a quick email using the contact form on the site and I'll add it in within like an hour or two. In the meantime, you can always just use the other option, uh, which is down here at the bottom under unlisted um, and then unlisted as well to put that in there. Uh, in my case, so I'm gonna go ahead and just actually add this right now in there. So I'm gonna go add new, um, I'm gonna go Avio and Gen 1 power meter. There we go. And just like that, and now let's get into here. And then every time I upload a new data file, it automatically figures out that AMP plus ID and it enumerates it in, just like you saw for the rest of them. So you can see my ETAPs in there, uh, the Garmin Vector 3 automatically pulled in there as well, uh, the Ceres Power Tap as well pulled in there. All that's automatic makes your life so much easier for comparing files across the board. And then when you do that up at the top here, you'll notice now, as opposed to showing the file names, it'll actually just show the entire uh, sensor name itself, the friendly sensor name, uh, makes it a little bit simpler. So going on down here into elevation, you can see these three different units had, you know, kind of different elevation. Keep in mind the scale, this is in the Netherlands, so this is really, really flat terrain. Uh, so you're talking like, you know, eight meters of total elevation in here. I mean, it's nothing. So don't overthink the particular graph in this case. Um, also, I can rename all these graphs. Um, so I can just type in anything here and call the uh, river ride. There we go. And so you can see just like that makes it really simple to go ahead and do that. Um, mean max power graph as I explained earlier. This allows me to see the mean max power over this particular um, ride. So in this case, what allows me to see is that the Avios was of Avio. Sorry, Avios is like what British Airways calls our frequent fire scheme, um, and it keeps on like hitting my head as Avios as opposed to Avio uh, or Avio. Um, in any case, what you see here is that. This unit was undercutting the sprints, and as a result, it's going ahead and undercutting its total power for those higher end levels. Whereas down here, it's fine because it's not undercutting sprints. Again, fixed in the latest unit, but this graph makes it really, really obvious as to what's going on. Super cool graph to use. GPS tracks, uh, pretty straightforward. You just go and zoom in to whatever you want to look at uh, and look at these different sections here. Uh, you can switch over to satellite view and you can say, hey, what was going on this bridge right here? Um, what happened? Uh, and you can look at the tracks and just kind of figure out, you know, which one was right. Um, it's as simple as that. Generally speaking, um, I would use satellite view for any sort of GPS analysis as opposed to map view. Uh, and the reason is that you don't know if the map view is properly aligned. So right here is a perfect example. So if you looked at just the map view, you would say that the red track was in the river because it looks like it's in the river. But once you put the satellite there, you realize the red track is still just barely on the bridge. Um, and that's really important, especially when you get in areas that don't have great mapping data. So most of the time your rivers, um, that couple meters does make a difference. So definitely always use a satellite view when you're double checking things. Most of the time in my review, I will go back to the map view for screenshots because it's a little bit easier to see unless I'm trying to show something just like this, in which case I go to the satellite view. So going down, we saw the sensors menu already um, <clears throat> that we already talked about. Stats, this is your kind of summary stats. So you can see distance, ascent, uh, average cadence, average heart rate. This is sort of the top line stats. As I say all the time though, averages are the worst way to compare things. Um, you can have three units that never agree the entire time and still the same average because averages is the average of high and low data points. So just keep that in mind. So every file I can click on edit. I can do that time F that I talked about earlier. I can check to show different uh, charts here. Each one of the charts I can enable or disable for that graph. Um, this means that visitors to your public page cannot enable any of these things. It's all kind of hard set for them. Uh, so you can go ahead and just show certain files there um, on that as well as change the colors. And then download file sets simply gives you a zip file with all your files in it. Uh, again, if you're sharing public links, then go ahead and do remember that all your files are in there. There's no like privacy zones or anything like that built into it. Uh, it is what it is. So that's the whole point of, of public links for this um, is to make it public. It's a lot of people to analyze whatever they want with their data um, when you give them that link. Again, it's totally private. Um, and that's something to keep in mind. There's a lot of people that use this. Uh, so we just crossed over 2,000 users um, in the last week or so, which is like mind boggling crazy to me. Um, and that includes like, uh, uh, you know, Tour de France, World Pro Cycling Teams, uh, universities, uh, a lot of manufacturers in this space as well use it. Um, so it's really designed to be just a comparator tool between different data sets. Um, and the same thing is true for running as well. I know this video is getting kind of long now, so I'm not really going to go through the full running side. But I want to show you a couple of the neat things here. So this is a set here that has running data in it. Um, so this set is a run I did, I don't know, back a, a few months ago or so um, in Paris, just a simple up and down uh, the Champs-Élysées back. 
um, home again. But what's cool about this is this data has developer field data in it. So the analyzer supports showing developer fields. You may be wondering what the heck are developer fields. Um, developer fields are Connect IQ data fields. So it actually doesn't have to be just Garmin devices. Uh, Wahoo devices can write developer fields, for example. And these include things like running power. So on a given file, if I open a bunch of files that have developer fields in it, I will see those developer fields here. So in this case, I uploaded a 935 with Garmin's running power app. And then I uploaded the Vivo Active 3 with Stride's running power app. Um, and then I also uploaded the same thing that 935 had the RunScribe um, Connect IQ app on it. So um, I'm basically comparing three different Connect IQ apps all about running power. And I can enable different fields. These are all the fields that are recorded in the Connect IQ data field. So there's a ton of data in there that you can go and compare. Um, and you can mix and match things and figure out how they might overlay best. Um, really, really powerful stuff. A little bit beyond the purpose of this video, but just to make you aware of that, uh, it is in there now and it's it's super cool and it's great for comparing running power any sort of thing where people are using connect IQ data fields um, but they aren't like standard data fields in the overall analyzer so awesome stuff also when it comes to the number of devices you can use um, it's I don't think we have a practical limit uh, I've done like seven eight different devices at a time uh, so you can see right here this is five different devices uh, watches and all sorts of stuff um, in some cases, you won't see totals in descent or ascent. Um, and the reason is that the whole theory behind the analyzer is to only show the raw data, so to not make anything up. Um, and so I don't mean that in a bad way, but like if you look at Strava or Training Peaks or other platforms, um, they will go ahead and massage to some degree the data. So the whole idea behind the analyzer was to never uh, make up data. In other words, to never assume something, to only show raw data and that's it. So if it wasn't written in the file, we don't show it, we don't make an assumption, we don't try to connect dots that aren't there. Um, it's a little different than something like Strava, which goes ahead and massages data. That's why you see like your number is different between your distance on Strava and on your unit and stuff like that. So an example that here is this Gear Sport Fit file uh, that I have. In their case, they don't actually write a distance value in the total of the, the end of the file, if you will, nor do they write an ascent. So we don't try to recalculate on their behalf. Because when you get into like recalculation of distance and ascent and stuff, it sounds like it might be simple, but there's a number of different ways you can do it. And those all produce different results. Even if the results are only 1% different, they're different. Um, so no assumptions made. In this case, we just simply say, zero that's that's what they recorded as a null value there um, and so just keep that in mind in some of these stats there as well um, but this is really cool like on the sensors you can see here i had the wahoo ticker x connected to three different sensors or three different head units sorry so the edge 520 with the power tax power to max the edge 1030 with the vector 3 and the edge 520 with the power tap g3 um, so again multiple device files will show up here on under a single sensor id uh, which is pretty cool stuff so finally, if you want more information on this, hit up the link at the bottom uh, for the DCR Analyzer or just simply dcrmerica.com slash analyzer. Uh, and this page will show you how to get signed up for it and how it all works. Uh, the super short version is it's five bucks to use as a day pass. You can create three sets um, within that and you can go ahead and uh, tweak those sets for up to 24 hours after that they become read-only sets. Um, or it's 29 bucks a year for unlimited sets. Um, so you see like pro teams and stuff like that tend to use it for the unlimited set side of thing. Um, whereas if you just have like uh, a couple files from you know a couple different rides that you want to compare real quick uh, you can do that here there are certainly free versions of things like this out there um, but this is really something i built for my analysis for my reviews and it's kind of like it's really fine-tuned for comparing data um, for review or comparison purposes when you may not trust a given sensor um, more so than comparing rides for like physical fitness purposes um, so if you look at something like training peaks or wko or Golden Cheetah, or I mean, there's tons of them out there. Um, those are really about the fitness side of it, where this is really about the sensors and understanding um, the underlying data itself without any tweaking of that data. Um, so it's, it's super clean, you know it's super clean. Uh, I think it's kind of cool that at this point, like it's been out here for about a year and a half, two years now. Um, and a lot of the folks in the industry use it as well, which is great. So uh, I'm reasonably confident that we're displaying the data the right way um, and that we're doing it in a way that's as like unbiased as possible. So there you go. Thanks for watching. Uh, I know this is probably a really long and boring video for most of you, um, unless you're trying to use the analyzer, in which case you probably found it exciting. Have a good one.